There's no music. We'll have beer bottles instead. <laughs> I can say I can't hear any music now. It says it's playing, yeah. but it really isn't. It was a minute ago. Yeah, let's saying. have a let's have a beery glug instead. Right. Well, we'll 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 we've done fifty episodes, so we don't need the music. There should be <laughs> some ukulele music playing. But anyway, here we are. We have made it to the fiftieth episode of the Multivale Podcast. Why me? 50, 50, 50 episodes. That's mad. So we, 50, 50. Uh, we've uh, we've had a short break. I think the last time we did a podcast was just at the beginning of August. So this is the it's not quite the beginning of September. We're kind of I don't know third of the way through. So we've been off on our some well some of us have been off on our summer jaunts and adventures. So we'll catch up with some of that today. But we just thought we'd just um, have a little kind of reminisce back to the last fifty episodes and think back to the very dark days of January twenty twenty one. And an idea for a podcast came along because we were that fecked off of sitting in our houses, drinking yeah. drinking supermarket beer. I was um, working. And occasionally having a Zoom quiz on a Friday night where everybody just got pissed. Um, mm. And we missed our pubs, weren't we? And then I've okay. managed to troll back. I've got a few photos. I've got the first the first release photos. Actually, you guys, you'd better, didn't you? Because we were in tier three down there in Staffordshire, so we never, we never were released. But you guys had a little bit of a little bit of a window, didn't you? Kind of Christmas Christmasy yeah, time, because yeah. um, you, you were in tier one for a while, then tier two. So that's the plan. So we'll just kick off with our normal beery news, and then we'll just do a little bit of beery highlights. So, gentlemen, are we on good form? Yes, yeah, that's bad. Yes. For, uh, Fair yeah. while we were maybe hoping trying to get to the York Beer Festival this weekend, but uh, didn't didn't quite. Didn't, I'm guessing I know Nick didn't go. Bruce, you, did you get your nose in the door? No, I've been busy with him going away and one thing or another. We've been absolutely busy. I've been in the pub quite a bit, but uh, I don't think it's sold out. But by all accounts, it's jolly good fun. Yes. Yeah, it looked very nice. It didn't look very busy. And I'm, I'm just having a chat with Nick before we came on air that I've heard a few reports back that quite a few festivals not very busy. I know at peak end, I was I was in Bakewell. Uh, yesterday, and I know they had their peak end uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there were actually a few moans because they didn't sell as much beer, so they weren't mm-hmm. rotating the beers around. I think they, they kind of advertised it'd be, I don't know, 20 or so beers, and then there was only about five on, and basically they, they just weren't selling it. So and where was normally... The is that all these, so many food festivals now, and all the food festivals yeah, incorporated yeah, beer festival, yeah, yeah. all the novelty of beer festivals kind of been eroded, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I also maybe think that obviously most people have had a holiday this year, and so they may be feeling the pinch a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. Funny yeah. Thing I, about, I was out. I was out in York on Saturday night, and I couldn't believe how quiet it was. Um, it was insane. Uh, there was three. Yeah. We didn't go in. There were three people in uh, Bully Dog, uh, uh, but again, um, nobody, nowhere was absolutely heaving. It was. It's sitting miss, isn't it? Yeah, because I think some like I was out in town on Saturday, and some places were were full. And then it's the other place, absolutely deserted. I mean, literally a couple of us. There was only me and one of the first thing, like on a Saturday, like six o'clock. So it's uh, very strange. So B news. So we talked last time a little bit about um, this change in ABV. And as we mentioned then, quite a few of the pubs and chains and uh, sorry, breweries have been looking at that. So I've not come across this yet, but I noticed that say Hostel have brought out a new Cornish Best. Uh, 3.54%. So that's kind of a brand new beer. New that's beer. That's kind of been set up. the taxation into it, yeah. Yeah. And then again, in in the uh, morning advertiser, they were just, just going through um, kind of what is it, this £5 pint, which is now kind of almost quite the norm. I think it wasn't quite £5. The average was about £4.70, I think, when they did a survey a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they run down that of that £5, 10% is profit. 32% is overheads, 33% is tax, and 25% is manufacture. So still the biggest the biggest pint of your pint is still the tax, isn't it, on your beer? It is. It is. So, uh, hmm, interesting. That's uh, and then again, on, I think... That's, that's, that's if you're freehold. So, I mean, if you are a manager of you are in a tight pub, I would think those percentages would be quite, quite significantly different because obviously the owners of the pub want their bite out of that as well, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And then I think, again, I think people have been listening to our podcast because, again, we, we've tracked a little bit. So the uh, Carling Marston Brewing Corporation, whatever they call these days, uh, mm. announced uh, last week that they are going to close Witchwood Brewery. So I think we talked about that previously. We talked about uh, Jennings Brewery uh, some time ago and obviously Tetley's. And, again, I think uh, one of the camera uh, ladies who tweet a lot, she put on this um, tour of destruction Again, for those that are on uh, on YouTube, 
Tetley Brewery was closed by Carlsberg in eight, in uh, 2011. London's Field Brewery was sold in 2022. Jennings was closed in 22. Uh, the Marston's Visitor Centre, the Brewing Centre place was shut in 22. Excellent. Eagle Brewery was sold in 22 to Dam. Ringwood Brewery, we talked about, if I'm thinking some Ring, 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 uh, Ringwood Brewery beer now, Razorback, uh, was closed. Uh, and then Witchwood, unfortunately, again, has been closed. So, And okay. things like Hobgobbly will be then brewed in Verton. Uh, like most other beers these days. So, yeah, I'm afraid it's another example, isn't it? Of talk, talk a good game, but then slowly just dismantle kind of the brewing. So, quite sad. Uh, <laughs> I mean, as, as always, Sam Smith has been in the news again, and we'll come back to Sam Smith. So, Sam, Smith, so Sam Smith's a bit, I've been doing the opposite. Rather than making beer weaker, they've been making beer slightly stronger. So they've they've changed the um, ABV of their Alpine Lager. They've actually pushed it up um, to three point four percent. So and I think was it was three point two before, something like that. No, two point um, eight. Two point eight. So they they've made it a little bit stronger, um, and uh, yeah. So and, and then uh, look, quite a lot. In fact, Bruce, you'd mentioned this a couple of weeks ago that mm. I think you'd, you you'd been somewhere where it was nine pounds you'd pay for a yeah, pint yeah. or something. It was nine. And and Boke and Bailey, who do a pod a, a brewing podcast, they they picked it up, and it, it kind of a lot of people jumped on as well. And they said that they were, you know, gradually, if you've been going to Sam Smith's, especially down south, the price has been going six, seven, eight pound a bottle. Um, and then they moved the bottles and they shrank them down to three thirty. And they said on a recent trip, we paid seven pound for a pint of pure brewed lager, and six pound for a pint of all brewery bitter. Outrageous, so, isn't it? From Sam Smith being some of the cheapest pubs in the country, it's slightly changed, hasn't it? And it's, yeah, the London you know, price is insane. I mean, around here, it's still pretty good. And they are now doing a four X again. That's three point four percent, and they've increased the dark mile. But consequently, because people have lowered his pubs, link with Sam Smith's pub, everyone's drinking the four X, which I have to say, I did try it, and even I could drink it. Um, yeah. So oh, the old brewery sales are collapsing, and now he's taking the pumps out. So he's, he's even destroying his own flagship beer. Very, very strange. Yeah, strange. Do, you, do, do you think the London pricing might be just to attract a certain sort of clientele rather than everybody now? No. I mean, it could be good. I mean, obviously, again, as we keep talking about, obviously the, you know, the, the cost of living crisis and, and the crisis for um, small companies and you know individual pubs is just massive, isn't it? I mean, a lot of those pubs, Sam Smith, certainly in London, are massive pubs, aren't they? They'll take oh. a lot of energy to to light and to heat and everything. And to upkeep, I mean, you know, they do, they do, they do do some nice re refurbs, but it's, uh, yeah, and obviously there are still a number that are closed. I think again, there's another somebody else is running a new new story about that about all the pubs that are still closed. I mean, again, as, as you said, Bruce, some iconic pubs around the place that are still completely shut up and oh, look sure. like. I mean, again, it's it's what it's three, two, two, three years down, isn't it? Now? Quite a lot yeah. have been shut and um, a bit of a shame. So I did think then because. We do tend to mention in our 50 episodes, I think having flicked back a few of them, we do obviously mention uh, two pub chains in particular uh, quite frequently. So I just thought we'd, we'd just take a little bit of stock and just reflect on. So Sam Smith, we do talk about quite a lot. Um, they are Yorkshire Old Brewery. They were founded in 1758. They were the kind of the family that set up not just Sam, but then as always a dispute, uh, like often happens in Yorkshire Brewery, set up John Smith as well. They do have over 200 pubs and 12 hotels. Which again, I don't think we've ever been. Have you been to any of their hotels? Well, I don't know, we, we talked well the about Seahorse it. is in uh, York. That's uh, our hotel in town. Uh, and the rooms are quite old-fashioned. We've got lovely ways to do a cracking breakfast. But, uh, yeah, they're funny little places there. But there's, yeah. in, uh, there's one in Harewood. I think it's Richmond, yeah. or, Richmond or Kingston on Thames. They say that's absolutely cracking. Yeah, yeah by the yeah. way. I mean, look, there's India. You said there's quite a few New Yorkshire, but there are some kind of dotted about, which are kind of interesting ones. Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned before, they're quite unique. All the Sam Smith pubs because they are very much tied houses. In that you don't, you can't even go and buy a Coca Cola or a Pepsi because they actually have their own scintilla uh, brand, <laughs> um, and therefore all the soft drinks. Uh, but again, I think they're all vegan, aren't they? It says there, yeah. um, uh, their own soft drinks, which they make as well. And although they don't make their own spirits, they only buy it from one place, which is Walks and Scott's Wine and Spirits. So, again, they are quite unique. And I think they're all labelled Sam Smiths, aren't they? I don't think they've got any of the labels label on Walk them. And Scott, yeah. Yeah, yeah Scott and Walk and Scott, which I think have been a, um, closely linked. Um, and they still do have the biggest team of shy horses in the world. I'm not, I, didn't, I, I can't really 
check this, but apparently they did uh, did used to have quite quite recently the world's biggest horse, um, Extra Stout, who was mm. stabled in Tadcaster. If so, you look at the angel of my horse, he can go out the back, but it's closed presently. Yeah, but it's short. Yes, I was going to say. Yeah, we had a quick. Doesn't uh, doesn't Budweiser? Don't they have horses? Yeah, they do have them. Yeah, and but I, I would have thought horses. they would have more than Sam no. Smith because, like, say, well, Bruce, the only ones that Sam Smiths have are stable around at the, Yeah, in Tadcaster. Yeah, no, it did say. I think Wikipedia, whatever, did say that Sam Smiths still have more than even Budweiser, which I guess is a again slight quirkiness. And then actually, when I was walking, um, so I went to Bakewell and I had a little walk and into Bakewell down the down the lovely manifold track, and I was listening to a podcast about Weatherspoons. Just the yeah. other chain that we talk about a lot. And again, they've been in the news quite recently as well. There's some suggestion. I don't know if you picked this up, because obviously they've got 30 pubs for sale now. And there's been yeah. quite a bit of kickback and quite a lot of kind of resident groups are now saying we want the what don't don't get rid of our weather spoons. So I think it's one of the, I think it's hiring gay where there's like there's there's quite a lot of um uh which is backlash, which you thought would be the opposite. But what okay. they're saying is it should be a community asset. That of course what yeah. it is now, weather spoons is is becoming the place where, again, for older people, they go there all day. They, they sit in the night warm. They have their bottomless cup of coffee and cup yeah, of tea yeah. all day. Uh, it's warm. Um, they meet other people. And they're actually saying, so there was there are some suggestions there. Not, not, <laughs> not if it's St. Albans, Mike. Don't you remember? They were on St. Albans, yeah, Stella. Uh, yeah. All, all well, boys. The suggestion is we should, shopping bags. We should nationalise. Well, the spoons should be nationalised so, so that they can't close down their venues. But anyway, there's a, there's a podcast called The Foil English, which is a quite an interesting podcast. And, and they have a whole program on um, Weatherspoon. So I just, they, they came up with some nice, interesting facts. I thought Mash was sharing these. So Weatherspoons sell three million pints a week. And that really is kind of where they get their, their power from. Because I think it's the Walmart model, isn't it? That I think Tim Martin, who apparently wanted to be a squash player, then he wanted to be a, a squash kind of whatever, run squash courts all around the world and, and realised there was no money in it to go into brewing. But he'd, he'd read the Walmart kind of way of doing business. It's just about volume, just about you, everything tight and volume. So the myth that Weatherspoon sell, you know, end of the line beers and beer that's out of date, they don't. They just, they, just buy, they just buy in volume. And, and a bit like a bit like Tesco, et cetera, they drive a really hard bargain. Um, you know, well, they signed a contract for three, four years. Yeah. As a brewer, you're going to get national so exposure, he... and that's what you're getting back, isn't it? You're getting back, you know, your your beer in these pubs, but he wants it at a bloody cheap rate so that he can put it sometimes even cheaper. Half a million people visit a spoons every day in the UK. Oh. That's just bonkers. Isn't it? That that is mad. Oh. And, that's one in every hundred forty people. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy, isn't yeah. it? But when you uh, think how serve... many pubs he's got, then yeah, yeah, they serve half a million breakfasts every week. So I think they are, the, and actually, apparently, they came third in the best breakfast of the year in one of the Sunday Sunday paper things. How many entries? Was the three? The breakfasts are disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> They're the fourth largest coffee sales in the UK. I was interested that Greg's apparently number two these days, which is interesting. Mm. And this was one that again was bonkers. They sell forty-five million steaks a year, which mm. is you can't you just can't put that in. <laughs> <laughs> that would suggest 45 million people have had a steak from a decent butcher, wouldn't it? Because yeah. for us. Yeah. And and again, <laughs> the, the point they're making the podcast is that what what again, apparently this was the story behind it. He had to go for free houses because when he tried to try and buy pubs, none of the big chains would sell him because they they saw him as a competitor, which is why he started looking at. So the first ever weather spoons in the UK was a betting shop. Uh, in Northland, which he converted, and the second one was a car showroom, and that then created that model because again, the big pub companies just wouldn't sell to him, even though they were, you know, trying to flog their pubs, they wouldn't sell them to him because they thought there'd be a direct competition, and and they knew he was, he was going to be a freehold. Uh, so now he's got eighty eight hundred eighteen pubs, and as we said, some fan, some stunning buildings that have been, you know, preserved and kept and. Uh, you know, quite a few post offices in my neck of the woods. We've talked about the Harrogate Winter Garden, which is yeah, fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Which again would have been, you know, something that size would have would have fallen through really. But as we said, there are thirty three currently for sale. But but apparently that's that's again part of the, the kind of company. That's what they do every three or four years. They they just sell, they buy, they open new ones, and then they sell the ones well, that not, are making the money. They're not all for sale as such. It's it's where leases are run out. Yeah, it's like he said. It's it's the it's the press that are basically. 
blowing the story. I mean, he's even said, you know, they've got the uh, one listed at Robin Hood. Oh, Weatherspoons has closed. Well, that's because the, the bloody airport's, airport's closed. closed. Yeah, yeah. He hadn't had yeah. any offering to over, over it, you know, and, and there was three or four <laughs> where the lease came up in London. And there's another pub chain that uh, really pushed themselves as the next Weatherspoons, and they they jumped in and bought mm. those. And then most of the other ones are where in sort of towns up in Durham, for example, he's already got another Weatherspoons in Durham. And Durham isn't that massive a place. So I think he looked at them both and thought, right, we can drop that one and get the same sort one of works, custom yeah. coming through yeah, our so normal yeah, so the... Well, the nicest one of the two in Durham, because yeah. the other one's a big cavernous, characterless place. Yeah. He had two in Mansfield, for example, didn't he? I mean, not that, that was, you know... Mm. Bad, and I think Chesterfield has got two. I think he's closing one of those, isn't he? Uh, I must. I was well, was... honest. I went to the Tilly Stone yesterday afternoon in Gateshead, and uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, um, the staff are all friendly and lovely, uh, but uh, it was well, again, they were saying they were saying on this podcast that again that that open planness is again part of the business model because mm. it requires less staffing. So yeah. you don't want booths, you don't want little crooks and crannies because you can't manage that. So yeah. you clear everything away. So you can see, you know, if a big, big long bar, and you can see. So anyway, I thought that was quite. Well, when you see those figures, though, you see how his profits stack up, and they are mind boggling. Oh yeah, right yeah, yeah. Right, beery highlights. And so, so it's been a few weeks since we were, we were last on the podcast together. Um, some of them, certainly Nick and I, managed to get together uh, for a, a smallish little beer festival that we went went to. Uh, but Bruce, you've been you've been to the, the Bella Peak, and you've been over the channel. Yes. And, and and savoring delights. Well, we won't mention Copenhagen and other places on your yeah. way to get to France, which is a very interesting way around. Uh, and you sent back a few little little missives as you were as you were there. Um, did, you were I trying mean, to find uh, cheapest beers in France, which is something not always easy, is it? Yeah. No. Well, they actually, the waste is the thing. We because our prices sneaked up, we kind of went to Paris fearing the worst. And I say. You could get a five euro till nine o'clock. Anyway, you could get a five euro pint. In fact, in Nice, uh, you could sit there in uh, the sort of entry of the old Soleil Market in a really atmospheric uh, area with the beach across the road, palm trees swaying as dusk came. And you could actually get a pint of Pelfar so for three euros ninety. Um, so, I mean, this is the thing, really. I think we're almost getting a bit, you know, I've seen even number prices because things get so expensive. Again, out the box now, I mean, uh, Pint of pint of Silver King, I think, is up to four sixty five mm. now. Uh, anybody drinking lager there, but but lively now at paying five euros or more. So we were pleasantly uh, surprised. But I said, you do miss the variety though. And I mean, uh, I was reading about the decline in wine sales in France, but their wine sales are twelve percent down. Supposed to be a craft beer explosion, but it was hard it's to hard. find any craft beer. To be well, honest, it was mainly Cronenberg, Cronenberg, Cronenberg. Yeah, uh, same and some uh, left, left was it left. Yeah, I want to say Hopalk at Cronenberg. Well, they're rather bizarrely in the um the bar in uh, the Salaya in uh, Nice. You could get you could get anything off anything off the uh, taps for three euros ninety. So I was drinking Pelfall for three euros ninety pint. Then uh, uh, Ben ordered a pint of Guinness and he bought it in a Heineken pint glass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, pleasant Very good. surprise. Like a yeah. rice, but the pricing was fun. Yeah. yeah. Very good, and and you and you reckon that their size will make a fantastic weather spoons? It would that be fantastic? Yeah, I mean, great, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> Big cavernous place. Very good. Well, I had I had a kind of little mini trip actually. And when we did an uh, episode of Manchester uh, earlier in the summer, and we we managed to well, we went to Marble and and um, uh, Marble Arch was apparently was on Scritly Come Dancing on Saturday night by all accounts. Was it? The pub where we yeah, apparently one of them one of them was drinking in there for some reason. Oh, wow. So yeah, if you if you if you flick back to last Saturday, this Saturday, oh. so we we were on trek on the way to uh, Malton to go to the um, Old Malton Beer Festival, and it was also the bank holiday weekend for the food festival. So me and the son, so we thought we'd do it. We'd go and we'd go by the train, but we. We were jumping stations in uh, in Manchester, so we thought we'd go to Piccadilly and we'd jump off and we'd walk under the arches and have a little trip to the Cloudwater Brewery and the Track Brewery, which are literally oh. across the road from one another. Probably about 10 minutes' walk from Piccadilly, kind of walk under, and you come out the back door under the arches and, and up the yeah. hill there. So really, really handy. Um, and, yeah, I mean, interestingly, they're very, very similar. They are both, as you can see, if you're on YouTube, kind of industrial units. Um with quite a lot of barrel storage as you go in where they're laying down kind of bourbon casks for beers. Um, quite modern inside. So we went to track first. And we were just just literally with the first two in on opening opening day. Um, again, as she, for those on um, YouTube, a massive beer list. 
probably about I think there were thirty beers that they were they were available. Um, not as much cask, about four cask, and the rest were on keg as well. Um, but quite a nice little brewery, very all open plan. So seating area, as you can see again on the pictures there, and then to the left of where the bar guy is, that's where the brewery is, and it's all open plan. There's no glass or anything in track. It's just all there. You just and the brewers are walking around and doing stuff. So quite pleasant. And then you literally come out of that brewery and look across the way, and across the way is Unit Nine Tap Room, and that's the Cloudwater Brewery and Tap Room mm. as well, which again is a similar kind of unit, a little bit different. This when you go upstairs, and again, if you look again, if you're on YouTube on the right of there, was oh. uh, yeah probably the most laid back tap room I've been in with kind of lounging areas and kind of cushions and things you could sit down. Oh. As you can see, it wasn't particularly busy on a. And the, this is what this was was it Thursday or Friday bank holiday weekend so it wasn't busy busy. What was quite nice though was that they had cher cherry popsicle, um, a soda uh, on draft which was quite nice. So the son wasn't quite eighteen yet so he had quite enjoyed having a pint of that. Which I think it was quite good for tap. To have yeah, that. And it was it was bloody bloody nice actually. Um, are those all in the table? Um, I think they put it was it's a bit arty. Yeah, they might they might be all they might be mirrors, uh, and they got some very impressive barrels. Again, not quite as many beers on. Um, and I would say the beer wasn't quite as good as the beer across in track. Uh, yeah. But it was very nice. And so, again, if you if you have got an hour to spare, definitely worth, worth 10 minutes up. You get 20 minutes in each one and get back to Piccadilly um, and jump on the train. So, track brewery tap and cloud water brewery trap, tap. And then we got there. We got to our little, um, well, one of Nick's, Nick's locals to the, uh, we, I think, did we, we went on the Friday night, didn't we, Nick? Yeah, the Friday. Malton Royal Oak Beer Festival, which was, uh, was better because it was yeah. it was steady on. We managed to get a seat, and there was it was just comfortably busy, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I yeah. understand Saturday was mad, but that's because the bigger bands were on a Saturday night, and they take yeah. quite a following with them anyway. So quite nice, twelve beers on. Um, again, there was a bit of a ticket system, but in the end, they, they said, "I'll oh, just pay buy what you want." So I think we managed to work our way through all twelve beers. We didn't quite have twelve pints for everything. I think between us, we kind of had one. And we shared, and we got a couple of halves, didn't we? Um, again, quite a nice range. I think Steve's always quite good, isn't he? The landlord in uh, pails, and there was a there was a passion fruit one. There was a stout. Um, I think they were all local work. Nick, I think pretty much. Well, I'm looking there. Wool Top, Pennine, uh, North Riding. Um, yeah. Three brothers from Middlesbrough, Great Newsome, Woodgate, Yorkshire yeah. Heart. Yeah, Kirkstall. Kirkstall. So, yeah. yeah, I like the way he displayed his beers. That's very good, isn't it? Yeah, no, it was nice actually. And again, you got your festival glass, but that well, was going for that's air, a air ambulance, sheet. isn't it? That's a printed sheet, bro. So yeah, he, he sticks yeah. them up and he, he good, scans them around, so you can see what you're going to get with a few toast, tasting notes. Yeah, and the weather was still quite good, so we were sat outside for all the time we were there. Um, got a bit cooler later on. It got a little mm. bit dark, but again, a nice, nice mission. So yeah, very, very, very nice. So Nicholas, you've been. Not too far because you've been working again. So, little a little summary of your kind of last couple of weeks uh, on, on the pictures for us. Yeah, well, first week I was on a seven day. We had a couple of big busy days, bank holiday week, and obviously when you were up, uh, I was working then, and then seven days so into our big event, our big remembrance event. So I already managed to get out. I got out for one middle of the week when we'd been out for something to eat, calling it Old Royal Oak, but quite a nice trio on. In there, uh, once again, Steve always tries to go for a, a light, a medium, and a dark one. So, and he always offers on the third. So, what I do midweek is I have a third of each and then see which one I like the best and then have a pint of that. So, he had uh, Yorkshire Heart to the side on. He had a uh, great Newsome uh, Red Admiral, which is quite a newish one for them, I think. And then a Kirkstall Black Band. And out of the three, the to the side was the standout one. It was really nice. It was, uh, Easily drinkable, uh, quite fruity to it as well. So that was a really good one. And then uh, yesterday, no, yesterday, no, Saturday. Saturday? Yesterday. Saturday. So went for a little run out to Naysborough and um, had a walk around the town. Missed the weather spoons out, but persuaded me other half to have a walk via the station. Said to her, oh, there's an Atlantic shop on the station there that uh, I always have rummaging, obviously, you two guess where I was heading to. So yeah. obviously, I don't think Jackie knew that there was actually a little bar on the station there. So I had a look at the around the little shop and looked in the bar and there was nobody in there at all. There was a couple just finishing off two balloons of gin. So they were heading out, a uh, youngish lad behind the bar. So I went in there, saw they had the Thornbridge 
made north on. That was very quaffable. That's their blonde bitter. And uh, Jackie had a J2 on while she was halfway down that. I managed to suck me made north off in a couple of drinks. So I said, oh, I'm just going to pop in and try their own, which is, uh, it's actually owned by um, the uh, Gorilla Brewing uh, Company that based over in Mexborough. Um, so the, the little pub or the bar on the station is called the Track and Sleeper. And lo and behold, I was talking about the fact that you were supposed to be going to see Thornbridge on Sunday, Mike, and uh, the lad behind the bar said, oh, did you say you're going to Thornbridge? I said, no, I should have been. I said, but I've come here instead. And it uh, transpired that he was the owner's son. So the guy who owns Grill Brewing, uh, son called Cameron. So youngish lad, but uh, obviously very keen on his beer. Felt a bit sorry because it was really required. You know, they were ticking over, I suppose, with a couple that had been in before us, then me and Jackie. Uh, but it was it was quiet for a Saturday afternoon, really. But he had, what, four real ales on? And it's 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 smart in there, inside and outside. I always like to sit outside. You know, you're sitting right on the platform so you can see the Northern Rail trains coming out the tunnel and going across the uh, viaduct there, which is quite stunning if you've ever been on that line. And I said to Jackie, I once again, I said, you know, to, to jump on the train at York, no matter where you're coming from, and do that tour up Nairsborough and Harrogate, you can have a cracking cross. I think we should be doing that next time, lads. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know... I mean, you know, Nairsborough's full of booze. I mean, I, I ticked full off of six places in Nairsborough now, Bruce, where you can get a decent beer, because obviously you've got the track and sleeper, and then just behind the station, you've got the Mitre, where we went last time. I know when us three yeah. did it. Yeah. And then you walk into town there, you know, yeah, unfortunately, keys on the end. commercial still closed. Okay, you've got Weatherspoons, but Weatherspoons always have a good range of Yorkshire beers on in there. You'll yeah. probably find more Yorkshire beers in that spoons than a lot of other spoons in, in, in the area. You've got uh, Blind Jacks, like, haven't you? Yeah, you've got Blind Jacks, you, you've got uh, Castle. So, yeah, and then, you know, if you jump on an Ed Harrogate as well, because there's a couple of more places in Harrogate. So anyway, um, yeah, I had a quick chat Very with good. Cameron and I had to be on the way and then found a new place to eat. It used to be a vintage inn on the Skipton Road just beside the Harrogate. It's been taken back into, I thought it was private independent ownership. In fact, it's owned by a company called uh, Brunning and Price Pub Group. Yeah, they're local it's, to us. They have the hand yeah, and they, trumpet. Yeah. They've got about 80 pubs yeah. down the spine of, of, of England, really, yeah, yeah, Pennines yeah, and that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually a lot nicer than the vintage inn used to be. And their house beer was uh, brewed by Brightside Brewery in Manchester. Mm. And that was their house beer. I was talking to the lad in there and said, you know, which one is it? Do you just rebrand it? He said, no. He said, we put the tender out to a lot of different breweries and said, look, we want you to brew beer, uh, but this one's brewed just for us. So it was a traditional bitter. Um, and then they also had the Black Sheep Respire on in there. And he ended up with a pint of Ilkley Bitter. But it wasn't quite right when the lad came around and said, do you want to try it? I said, give it a go. See what you think. And he came back. He said, oh, yeah. He says, it's gone. He says, what do you want instead? Like, so fair play to him. He didn't quibble. Uh, he changed it for me. So, uh, yeah, from not having much for a week, I had quite a nice little session on uh, on Saturday. Very good. Uh, so I think that's leaves me. So, yeah, I had a, uh, was it Friday, Thursday? It was my, um, again, another another day, another another trip around the sun. With me near to 60 so as a little treat um managed to persuade most of the family to have a little trek out to uh bakewell to visit, great so yeah so I, i'd skied that um on the manifold valley trail there is a hassop station which is quite a nice little setup really it's quite a big one of the old stations there and they do a fantastic breakfast so we called in there had breakfast um and then the idea was out well i walked from there into bakewell it was about a couple of miles they went by car and then the plan was that uh, me and the son, we'd walk up to the brewery and, and, and meet Mrs. when she'd done some shopping. There's a nice little micro bar called the Joiner's Arms, which is on the corner. Again, if you've ever been to Bakewell, the big roundabout in the middle of town where the Rutland Hotel is, and across the road, there's a great little micro bar. Very, very small. But they had six hand pumps on yesterday uh, oh. and two ciders. So called in there. Uh, it was very, very nice. Um, and then, yeah, up to, up, to the, um, uh, up to the brewery tap, which was fairly steady, actually. Uh, for a Sunday lunchtime, not heaving, but I'm probably, I don't know, but outside, inside, half tables were full. Um, couldn't get any artisan. Bruce had said he'd try to get uh, some. This is the Timothy Taylors yeah, um, and, and Thornbridge, which apparently is very, very nice. It's an elderflowery, gooseberry yeah. pale ale, but they hadn't, well, they were a bit, didn't really help. They weren't particularly helpful in the brewery. I did ask, but they'd got, they have a little shop in there as well. But I did check as I came out that it is, the, the uh, online shop has got them. 
Uh, but you've got to buy a case of, I think, 12. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I had a made north as well, which is very, very nice, which is their kind of new northern bitter, kind of a blonde bitter, which is very nice. And I've got to say, a very stunning pint of Jaipur, which was, uh, as yeah. When did you, did you find the, the made way. north quite flat, Mike? Because that's what I thought. I did a pint in a couple of mouthfuls because it was yeah. that's, easy, that's easy drinking. I mean, you can see. You can see it's kind of um, a little bit like a um, very, I call it Thornbridge colour, isn't it? They're all, a lot of their beers are that kind of colour. Yeah, but I said they call this a blonde bitter, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so anyway. So that was that one. So that was a good little trip. So episode 50. So just to reflect back, we did our first podcast back on the 22nd of January, 2021. So this is when we were in the, um, this was the Christmas that wasn't, it wasn't it, 2021. Uh, this was Boris telling us all that we were going to have a great Christmas and then literally pulled the plug on Christmas Eve. Um, so I think by that point, we were literally pulling our hair out. So I said, we decided, we'd, I'd been kind of listening to a few podcasts, um, kind of having been stuck at home and was going out for a walk. So we began putting this podcast together. So the first episode we called the Beer Trip Philosophers, which was really just three of us sat there, wasn't it? Just <laughs> rattling on about if we if we had the choice um, where we could go, really. And I'm not quite sure whether you two had actually ever listened to a, pod, a podcast. I don't think Nick has listened to a podcast. Still so. haven't. <laughs> but it was fairly. I wouldn't say it was new because it wasn't new. Oh no, I'm gonna listen to Bob Mortimer's uh, what's he the, something <laughs> Atletico Mint. <laughs> So yeah. it, it, it was a bit rough and ready. I can't remember how we did it. I, I think we, we probably did it. But I think we did it on Zoom because we've been doing Zoom quizzes, haven't we? So I think we'd yeah. been doing like a Zoom quiz for the families on a Friday night. Um, so yeah, so that was it. So I don't know how long that first one went on for, but anyway, we did it and we quite enjoyed it. And then, I mean, for a while, then we were actually chucking out almost one one a week in, in those early days, and then it's kind of gradually kind of slowed down a little bit. And again, I just just as perspective, I also signed on to Untapped as well, which again obviously is a, is a beer kind of check in and kind of rating thing. And since that January, I joined on the sixteenth of January, so I joined that same week we did that first podcast. So since that first podcast, I drank, I've had, I've sampled nine hundred and fifteen different beers. That's mad, isn't it? 915. And I've checked into a thousand ninety five different venues. Wow. I find it re I find it really difficult to navigate that uh, that app. Tried it, but it's just it's just not. I don't know whether you've got to use it regularly. But every time I think, yeah, I'll go on, I'll I'll, I'll record it. It's like yeah. you get so bloody frustrated with it. Every time I have found out what I'm doing, I've drunk the pint, I've moved on to the next pub. Is so, it just been used in this country? I can use it abroad as well. I use it use it abroad as well. I, I used it in Greece. You use it everywhere. It's, it's I think it's American initially. Um, I think my son did work out that that's quits to just under five thousand pounds if you look at it like four fifty for an average pint of beer. So uh, yeah, yeah, we won't, we won't we'll go there. Um, so we have covered quite a few different places. Though we, I've got to say, we've been mainly kind of north, as you as you'd kind of you know suspect. Um, the place that we've kind of talked about have been fairly north. I'm trying to change it so we can see all the lists. Uh, have been fairly northern. Um, with a little bit of, um, oh no, I'm going too far now. Um, so we've looked at pubs in Stockport. We looked. We talked about pubs in Bridlington, Newcastle upon Tyne, Stockton on Tees, Tadcaster Thirsk, uh, Newcastle on Lyme, Harrogate, Robinhams Bay, Manchester, Shipley, Sheffield, Brewster, the special from Penzance, Saltair, Driffield, Massam, R Ripon, the Isle of Wight. Bruce gave us a nice rundown about the Isle of Wight. Uh, Otley, Windermere, Stone, Beverley, Edinburgh, London, Salcombe, Keithley, Bowness, Gateshead, Keswick. Uh -huh. Howarth, Leeds, Wakefield, Jersey, Scarborough, Dewsbury, um, Rotherham, Durham, Nesbury, Ilkley, Skipton. And I think I've not covered them all. So, yeah, we've, we've covered quite a few there, haven't we, in our very yeah. discussions. Uh, oh, sorry, Mac I'd forgotten Maxwell and Portsmouth. I went back to the list. And I, I did a little one on, on Maxwell again, and Bruce gave us a little bit of low down on Portsmouth as well. So we, we've covered quite a bit of geography yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in those areas there. Malton, of course. Malton, well, yes. well, we'll Malton. Uh, we've also mentioned and been to, on our little trips, quite a variety of breweries as well. So I've mentioned track today, Jules. Me and Nick, we did a thing on Jules when we did a little thing in, in Stone. Obviously, we talked about Thornbridge and uh, Limestone, another Stone Brewery. We went to Roosters together on our, one of our early kind of trips and out, out and about. 
We've talked about Black Sheep, obviously Brass Castle, which is our Malton Brewery. Brew York, um, I think I've been to you both there separately. Brew York, Hawkshead, again, another, another area that place that we like. Whitby, again, very, very important brewery. Marble, Winkle, Cold Bath Brewing in Harrogate. Nick mentioned Harrogate before. Obviously, what local me Titanic, uh, the Windermere Brewing Company, who are based at um, the Watermiller Ings and Cloud Waters Mentions. So quite a few of those as well. We have tried, maybe not quite successfully, and I still think it's our next step is some live recording. <laughs> yes, we had some strange, um, <laughs> strange whatevers. So we also had Unox that was on the station um, in the Knox state near, near Harrogate. Uh, our first live podcast was actually, actually, we did start, I think, in the Shambles, Shambles Inn uh, in York, and then we moved to College Green, didn't we? And that yeah. was one of the very That's... early on that when. You That's why I had two pints of Rud, Rudgate, uh, Ruby Miles, now to eat, straight from work. Yes, you got very blah, 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 blah. By <laughs> end at any, night, I was a bit, without, yeah. Without any any technical uh-huh. requirements, you were, you uh-huh. were yeah. Um We used refreshment rooms. Um, we met there on a very cold Saturday when we were doing the um, the, the Real Ale Trail. Wet, Ale it Ale. was. Wet. Uh, we had a trip to Roosters. We were the only people in Roosters Tap Room. Uh, but we remember that. We had a massive bit of tap room to ourselves. Chambles, I imagine. Uh, Bruce, Bruce and I, I don't know Nick was with us that day. Uh, we had a little bit of a session in the Fosgate Social, um, in that, right in that yeah. window, top of the oh, window. Yeah. And then we did try one in Britain's Protection, but for I can't, and I still can't find the bloody recording. We did our we did our Manchester trip, so I thought that was worth reminiscing. So yeah, these are the pictures. So back in this would have been, I guess, April twenty one. So certainly for me, because as I said, we were in tier three down here. My first real beer was on the balcony um, in Whitby. At Whitby, yeah. Um, on the uh, what's that one called? The um, oh, what's that one called? Not the Harbour Master. The no, it's not the fisherman's wife. Oh yeah, it's... the one. No, the wharf. Yeah. It's just called the wharf. The wharf. Yeah, the wharf. Yeah. The wharf, and then obviously the brewery again. The Whitby Brewery up on the top there, because they had that lovely big courtyard. Again, they were able to open that early, so that was my first ever. I think that was my first beer on that. You look at look at the state of our hair as well. You can tell we've been locked down. <laughs> I think that was my first beer for something like six months, because we'd been locked down all the way through the winter, all the way through autumn. You guys were okay. You you kind of stayed out of it a little bit, and I think Bruce again. You couldn't you couldn't meet us that weekend, but oh, you, yeah. it was you. I think that was the same weekend, and that looks like the, is that the shambles? That's, that's, that's the shambles tavern. tavern. Yeah, that's the shambles yeah. tavern. Back of shambles tavern because again they had that outdoor area as well. So yeah. it's hard to remember, isn't it? That and I did as as we look at some of these other photos here. Uh, you know, we've mentioned the mitre. There's Nick and Bruce outside the mitre with bloody face masks on because again there was that. Stupid rules where oh, that was bonkers, wasn't it? If you were moving around or if you were sat down waiting to be served, yeah. you had to keep your mask on. Then, as soon as you got your beer, you could take your mask off and all that plaid about sausage rolls and having a substantial meal. Like it was madness, wasn't it? It was crackers, yes. Yeah. So, we looked quite, I think that was Nicholas, yes, yeah, as Nicholas mentioned, I think that was our trip around York when we met in the uh, <laughs> we're in again a great little thing, wasn't it, in College Green? Because all Actually, of the... it's funny you mention all that madness because if you saw the news tonight, it transpired that after uh, uh Boris Johnson came back to Downing Street after spelling hospital, his behavior is so erratic and he's out of control that we're gonna ask the Queen to speak to him to behave. That, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely crap. Yeah, yeah. But but that was great because in College Green they put out a load of seats, didn't they? Give your seat yeah. count to the due. All the pubs could do takeaway beers. And within that space, there's about what three, four different pubs in that kind yeah, of area, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll not done it this which is a real shame. Oh, it yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was us. And I think, as Nick says, that's after about four pints straight from work, and he's had nothing to eat all day, and he's he's already oh, really? a little bit green by that point. <laughs> it was very good. So again, just to run through, then. So again, it's it's amazing. So as I say, the first kind of three podcasts, we weren't really no, we weren't really kind of sure what we were going to do. So we did beer trip philosophers. We then did Orwellian thoughts, so we took the moon underwater concept, which has now become a podcast for some twats off Radio 5, uh, and talked about what our perfect pub would be. Yeah. We then talked about the good beer guide, and we thought how that was that often helped us. And then we sat to do our tours, so we did West from York, so we did kind of Skip Turn in Ilkley, we did Hall and East Ride In, we did the Real Ale Pennine Trail, we did Leeds. Nick did a kind of offshoot, and we did the labels and logos and reflections. I'm sure he'll tell us that that still is one of our most yeah. downloaded uh, episodes we've ever done. Yeah. YouTube it is, yeah. YouTube it is. Yeah. Uh, we then spent a, a number Went of... international with that one. 
<laughs> Number of weeks looking at York. Um, and in between, we did North Yorkshire Moors Railway and had a special guest on there. Um, not quite live from the Yorkshire Railway, but uh, Bruce's, uh, Bruce's nephew, uh, Kieran, came on and gave us a little bit of an update and uh, told, I think he, that was when they'd just been filming, I think, with, uh, what's yeah. his face? With the, uh, Cruise, yeah. yeah, East Reflection. We did York, we did quite a few Yorks. We did Sheffield, we did London. Uh, we then were on the road live with a trip to Harrogate and Nesborough. We then talked about Newcastle upon Tyne. We then did the Lake District. Uh, we then had an end of summer. Then we did Whitby. We then did Bruce did the Isle of Wight for us in Southern Ports. Yeah. Um, I then did Jersey. Nick then went for a nine pint pub crawl around London on his own and told us <laughs> all about that. Um, yeah. You guys went off to Wacky in Castleford and came yeah. back with tales of uh, interesting, interesting there. Um, Do that I did again. Something on Macclesfield, um, which was again, I think that was I did my first time. It came up this week. Uh, we then did Christmas. Oh yeah, the best pub for Christmas. I thought it was a good episode. Uh, then we did Stone. Me and Nick had a, a, a session in Stone. We then, we were looking back and forward, kind of New Year's version. Um, we then, me and Nick went to Tadcaster and met up with Bruce in York a bit later on. Uh, we then had a beer ramble around the Lake District in Amble. We then began doing an A to Z, where every week we drew out three letters um, from a Scrabble bag, and we could talk about a pub, a, uh, a place uh, or a particular beer. So that kept us going for quite a while, didn't it? All the way up to ep episode uh, 40. Uh, me and Nick then went on the quest for some stones in Sheffield. So we had a quite a nice little session in Sheffield. Uh, we then had me and Bruce at a session in York where I was looking for some lost brewers of York. We then had a bit of a break and we came back. with, And then we started on Malton. And that took us um, about four or five episodes to cover Malton. And then more recently, we had a trip to uh, Manchester and Stockport, where again, we were all together and we played back on that. Um, and then I think that just about brings up the day, doesn't it? So, mm. yeah. So a few highlights here. There's Nicholas and Bruce looking very quizzical in Rooster's tap room. Rooster's. Mm. That was before we started drinking the mad stuff that I then got us oh, that yeah. uh, bourbon laid down stuff which and sours. Um, there's Nick and Bruce in um, the very nice Thornbridge Market Cat. Market Cat, yes, in one of the that's booms. when that person wouldn't let us go upstairs, would he? Yeah, that was he forces, that was... forces into that downstairs booth, and I was saying, No, I want to go upstairs. <laughs> no, 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 we want you to sit there. I think they said they could keep a bloody eye on us. And I think we're on yeah. Jaipur then, by the looks of it. We're all on Jaipur. Uh, this is Nick um, at, uh, at the Molten um, Beer Town. So, Stroking a barrel of porter there, I think I was. Stroking a very strong barrel of, yes, gravity. It was, it, it was in the wood, that one, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, it was indeed. In the uh, wood. This was mine and Bruce, uh, Nick's trip to Sheffield. Um, that's us outside the Rutland, which is, again, I think the pick of the day. We managed to find some stones um, up on Eckershall Road. And we also had a little bit of homage to Anderson's relish. Hmm. Uh, so it, being, it was being renovated. It was surrounded by yeah, the yeah. builder fences. Um, this is our... <laughs> oh, no. Uh, monsoonal trip to... Um, yeah. well, the re oh, this was, was, it, was this the real ale trailer? Well, we just doing... No, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we got off, yeah. Because uh... we met in Dewsbury, and then we went to Huddersfield. So we, we had a, quite a nice drink in the, in the rat. In, in yeah. Huddersfield, uh, and then the, the Evans opened. So we didn't manage to get to the grapes, didn't we, uh, around the corner there, which was very yeah. nice. Mm. And then we got back in the centre of town and we thought we'd better eat something. Very England. <laughs> for reasons we can't really say, make us about <laughs> six pints in, we, we ended up going to Merry England, the Merry, one of the few Merry Englands still left in the UK in Huddersfield Town Centre. Who would believe uh, this? Merry England have actually opened a drive through in Huddersfield now. <laughs> And even the people in there can't believe it. They've had a very, a very eman emancipated <laughs> hot, hot beef sandwich, <laughs> which uh, didn't quite so. Is, is it a drive-through man without women as, as as well as everywhere else? It was just extraordinary. I can't believe mm. they did that. Yeah. And then you can uh, see a then... queue of people in mobility scooters waiting for <laughs> yeah. a can't you? Yeah. And then we ended have up. You got, the... Have you got a toilet? <laughs> we ended up at the King's Head on the station, which is just full of wet people dripping. And then yeah. jumped the train. Then we, actually, by the time we got to um, Marston, Marston, it wasn't so bad, was it? By the time no, we got no, to no, no. It, was, it wasn't bad. Then, and then we finished up in a very, very busy 
Steely Bridge Buffy Bar, which mm. slightly kind of, but not yeah. I would say downer, but it was it was just very busy and, we, and it, was, uh, it was full of people like us who'd been out drinking all day. Yeah, well, so, uh, and then yeah, it was a bit mad, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think this, I think this was the this was the second half of our Tadcaster trip, Nick. And there's a nice blazing fire there in Phoenix. Oh yeah, and I did have to mention pie. So Bruce there is very neatly yeah, just yeah. shoveling a pie in for us. <laughs> and then we're in the Acorn, aren't we? The top one there is in the Acorn. Oh. Yeah. Where I think again, we just, I think that's where you met us when we got off the bus um, from from Taddy. Um, and I think remember it was quite a cold day, so a nice little tour around New York as well. So yeah, a little reminisce really. Um, what do you think the best pint is you've had? Your phone ring, Christine. What do you think the best pint you've had in the last in this time? Phone, <laughs> on, phone, on. one second. I still, I still remember the uh, the Citra that me and Bruce had in uh, in Wakefield. It mm. was the first pint of the day. And you always, if you're going out on a session, you always want the first one to be a good one. Christine, and it's, uh, and I can't, I can't remember the name of the spot now. Um, it's just down a little side street. It's not a traditional, traditional pub. Yeah. Uh, just saying, Bruce, I still remember that that first pint sit we had in uh, in Wakefield. Mm, the first pint of the day. Yeah. yeah. And I say I don't know why it's because you know when you know you're going to have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of yeah. the speeds of course a day, you want the first one to be. Memorable to start it off like, and it uh, it was it was a good one, yeah, yeah. That was, talking, put mine, yeah. yeah I think Wakefield See, I, was. Uh, please went to Wakefield. Have to go. Expected pleasure, really, wasn't it, Bruce? You it know, was, I don't absolutely. know that we're expecting much, and Wakefield has got a bit of a, uh, you know, a down at heel image to it. But it was just everything worked so well in terms that there was a circular route. Uh, yeah. We weren't hitting it too hard, but you know, between pubs, there was a little bit to see or a little bit of a diversion. Uh, right. very different drinking holes. I mean, from a say, oh. that was was so more like a, it wasn't a really traditional pub, was it? Oh, no. And then obviously you had the you had the red shed, which was the labour club, which was yeah. quite unique. Yeah. Uh, you had a couple of the the coal hall, that is a very traditional pub. I think they reckon that's the only only pub still selling real ale. And then we ended up at uh, Clark's as well, didn't we? Which was a yeah. very very big traditional pub as well. So yeah. I think that the places we were drinking were were quite different, but. Uh, yeah. That Fernandez oh, Brewery tap was fantastic, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. That was well, like upstairs there with all the, the brewery in here, all the all the, the pub signs. So, no, definitely Wakefield. I don't know whether uh, whether we'd be disappointed we go back because, uh, you know, you would think hopefully all those drinking places are, are still open and still running, Bruce, but you just don't know nowadays, do you? No, no, it's tough. No. Because, no, uh, yeah, as you say, it was a unexpected, uh, fantastic drink. I really enjoyed it, especially when well, it really got dark and the, uh, the last pub winter was fab, wasn't it? Mm. Mm, yeah, I think I can put it to the best pint. I think this year the best pint I've certainly had. Um, the Yorkshire Show, Cold Bath uh, Brewing Company from Harrogate were there with a little stand. I tell you what, their their beer is excellent, excellent beers, Cold Bath beer. But the most disappointing pint was uh, the bloody uh, Irish pub in Manchester, which was supposed to be Britain's best Guinness. <laughs> oh, that that's, was uh, so disappointing. Yeah. That was More so goodness. disappointing. Yeah, I think yeah. the whole the whole point was being real ill drinkers. You can't name a decent pint, you mm -hmm. know. If, I'm sure if you drunk Guinness or drunk lag, you could say, oh, "Well, that's where you're going to get your best pint, Stella, or that's where you're going to get your best pint of Guinness." But it all depends what mood you're in, and that's the beauty about beer, isn't it? It's like wine drinkers who say, you know, you can have a different style, a different type of wine every day of the year, and so you can with beer. So you know, in, in respect of what we've got over here, yeah, it's been sad to see. Quite a few breweries. I mean, I think the real ale scene has reached saturation point in terms of breweries opening now. And obviously quite a few have fallen by the wayside. But in terms of the choice that you still have, and certainly around here, you know, in the pubs that where we know to go now, when you can have a minimum of two to three handfuls on the bar, you can have up to like where you were, like, you know, you can have 20 or 30 in some of these yeah. breweries. Uh, you know, it was so very, very fortunate. And, you know, even the French are just picking up on this now that hang on, beer's better than wine. Uh, then all to the good, really. Uh, I've just checked back because I think it was uh, actually one of those trips to York when I met you in the Phoenix, Bruce. And just, just before I'd that you'd come in with Evie, the guy had just changed the landlord, and there were two or three guys in front of me. And 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 the the glad behind the bar says, oh, it's on good form. It looks really nice. They poured it off, yeah. and they had it. And I said, yeah, and it was. So I, I must admit, I had some bolt maker last. The bolt maker was it Thursday night and and yeah it was all right but it wasn't anything yeah. like but that yeah. Timothy Taylor's in the Phoenix in York was just about um but I've got to say that Jaipur in 
uh, from the brewery in the brewery. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very very nice. So, yeah. So yeah, no. I, like you say, I think um, I think the trips that we went on were really good, and that's something that again, you know, that day we had out in Harrogate was really nice. And I think around, I think to me, just remembering those those days we had in York, especially early doors when. We were just kind of coming out of lockdown. Uh, they were mm. really, you know, you want to drink beer. York's a great place to drink beer, isn't it? Can't really do. Yeah. Some place not to aim to go, but I think we should have been to Norwich drinking. Norwich seems to have an awful lot of fantastic, fantastic. Long way to go. <laughs> we have to go to Norwich. Uh, not easy to get to either. I know. I know. Uh, so yeah, so that's where we're up to. So again, as always, we don't really know what we're doing next. So I think we're going to probably have to have a meet up and have a chat about oh, yeah. where we go for episode fifty one. Um, it's likely to be probably we. I think the way that we're all kind of running around now, it's probably going to be a monthly thing now. I think the weekly ones were great, but it killed you trying to well, get me. Me, me, and you will be planning our uh, Christmas, Christmas day where we broke. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, we need to get together on that one day. We definitely need to try and find yeah. a, a, a mutual venue for well, that. three three of us for a weekend, and then me and Bruce, yeah. you can yeah, normally yeah. sneak a day during the week, can't you, Bruce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. to after November, yeah. Mondays, Mondays to Fridays. So yeah. have a look at that. Yeah, well, I've got some days free as well. So oh, good. Get, get out some for some uh, decent rail offers. And then hmm. there we go. Yeah. There we go. Right. Cheers, gents. I will try and play some music, but I don't know if it will. Oh, there we've got music this time. <laughs> so, yes, till next time. Cheers. Did I see you? Did I see you? Oh, that was long. Cheers. Hang on. I was on Bradfield uh, Farmer's Blonde tonight. They've got a good selection in Whitby Co-op. <laughs> Still no music. Tell you what, Bruce, if you sing the national anthem, I'll pretend I'm Scottish and boo it. <laughs>